What's going on guys? Today is a really exciting video because I'm gonna show you how to create cinematic videos with basically any type of equipment that you're using. Let's go. Now ultimately, filmmaking is an art form. So that basically means there are no rules, only guidelines. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you some of the guidelines that help me to create my videos in a specific way to showcase cinematic elements. That's a mouthful. Anyway, let's first talk about framing and composition. Now, have you heard of the rule of thirds? It's basically a grid line that will help you with your framing and composition for your videos. Basically, your frame is gonna be split up into three different sections, the left, the middle, and the right. Usually when you watch films or when you're watching a dialogue between two subjects, you'll notice that the subjects are either on the left or right part of the frame. This will help with direction and to help guide the audience on the direction of where the film is going. Now, as for me, you'll notice that I'm directly in the center of the frame, not to the left, not to the right. This is because I'm talking into the camera, I'm breaking the fourth wall, and I'm trying to communicate with the audience. Now, the best way to understand framing and composition is to watch a ton of movies. Watch a ton of videos online and you will start to understand the hang of it when it comes down to framing and composition. Next, let's talk about my favorite topic and that is camera movement. For example, I use a gimbal to stabilize a lot of my videos. So this will absorb a lot of shake and vibrations that you will see in a lot of fast paced shots. However, handheld can sometimes be even better because if you want your audience to feel what your characters are feeling, that's a great way to showcase that. Now, a lot of movements that I don't see enough of is the roll movement, the roll axis. When you're on a gimbal or when you're handheld, try to incorporate roll movements. Your goal is not to make your audience dizzy, but it's to give them a different way to look at your videos. Don't overuse it, don't underuse it, use it when it helps tell your story. Now let's talk about today's sponsor, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes on topics including filmmaking, photography, illustration, design, and even more. Skillshare is a place where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Whether you're a filmmaker, photographer, writer, or musician, unlocking your style is the key to feeling fully at home in what you make. Your style is what actually makes your work stand out and helps you find your audience. That's why I recommend this course by Andy J Pizza called Find Your Style, Five Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity. Hey, do you wanna find your style? Let's go! You've heard it said that to be creative is to think outside the box. I think it's more about creating your own box, your own set of constraints. This fun and inspiring class lays out five hands-on exercises that will unlock your artistic identity. Working in your medium of choice, such as film, design, photo, and more. You'll explore who you are, what you have to say, and then put it all together in your own personal style guide. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and there are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused on the things you like and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 subscribers who check out the link down below will be able to get a free trial membership of Skillshare Premium. So what are you waiting for? Check out that link. Next, it's all about frame rates. 24, 30, 60, and 120. 24 is considered the cinematic standard. Why? Because it has that motion blur. And that motion blur, believe it or not, adds that artistic element that a lot of cinematographers are looking for. 30 frames per second gets a lot less of that motion blur and 60 and 120 frames per second and even higher than that will allow you to shoot in slow motion. And slow motion creates that dreamy effect and overall, I love using this in a lot of my videos. So if your camera does have that higher frame rate option, give that a shot and you'll see how much slow motion can impact your videos. Otherwise, you should be shooting mainly at 24 frames per second. Now this part is extremely crucial and that is the lighting. Now this obviously depends on the current equipment that you have available to you and your budget but your standard lighting equipment should have the ability to set the tone, the mood, and overall color of your videos. 
This will also save you time down the road in the editing process. So if you take a closer look at some videos, you will definitely notice a massive difference between what is called flat lighting and depth lighting. The depth lighting offers you that character. This is because the DP or yourself for that matter will know how to position the lights properly. As for me, I have three different lights currently on me right now. I have a key light, overhead light, and a light off to the side also known as an edge light. With these lights, I'm able to create character in my videos and depth. So that's very important and it makes your videos more interesting to look at. So if you have the ability to get some lights, definitely do that and look at different RGB lights, which will allow you to change colors. And overall, down the road, you should be getting tons of lights for your videos. Trust me, it's gonna make a huge impact on your work. Now this next part is more for those of you who have interchangeable lens cameras. If you do have this option, you will be able to try out different artistic lenses, such as anamorphic lenses. And if you do have this option, you will see a completely different look in your videos. They create these unique horizontal flares that gives you that extra cinematic pop in your footage. On top of that, they offer shallow depth of field, or in other words, a blurry background with different shaped bokeh balls, which is basically out of focus light in your background. And you can see this in this shot right here. For anamorphic lenses, there is no connection to your camera. So that means you're gonna have to learn how to control focus and aperture completely on your own. And this takes a lot of practice. Next, let's talk about stabilization. Now, I did mention earlier in the video that I use a lot of gimbals to help stabilize my shots. But what if you don't have a gimbal? Well, you can hop on a scooter or a bicycle, or if you're like me and you like one wheels or electric unicycles, you can use that to help stabilize your shots as well. If you have a gimbal and some sort of vehicle that you can ride on hands-free, well, try both and you're gonna get some beautiful, stable shots. Stabilization is key, but again, there is a time and a place for everything. Sometimes shakiness is better, but only if it helps tell your story. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about one of the most important things that you will ever need when it comes down to creating cinematic shots or overall cinematic videos, and that is the editing process. Learn how to edit, create cool effects, and you are going to make amazing content. For example, I went out to shoot with a friend and I got this decent shot of her walking on the ledge right next to a mountain, and I came back home, I looked at it, I was like, okay, this is a cool shot, but it could be better. How could I make this better? So I was like, hmm, how about I change the sky? So in editing, I was able to remove the boring blue sky and replace it with something much more dramatic. And by the way, if you wanna see a tutorial on how to do this in Movavi, let me know in the comment section below, because I think we can definitely make that happen. So overall, when you are editing your footage, make sure that you are incorporating story behind every one of your movements. Add specific transitions, effects, you can even add in artificial light leaks in editing too. There's literally nothing stopping you in editing. And by the way, color correction and color grading are two major things behind telling story through emotion in color. And if you want a quick rundown of how to do color correction and color grading in Movavi, check out this video right here where I go over that process. Well, that ties up this video. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Movavi Vlog now. All right, I'll see you in another video. Peace.